different topic, the risk of recurrence for patients who are diagnosed with estrogen receptor positive early stage breast cancer. We've known for a long time that patterns, that patterns of recurrence risk are different for women with estrogen receptor positive and estrogen receptor negative breast cancers. And women diagnosed with an estrogen receptor positive breast cancer can have a recurrence within the first few years after diagnosis, but can also recur many, many years later. And there's very little understanding of the biologic factors that drive these types of recurrence patterns. This is important because if we understand this better, we may be able to target our therapies better for women who may have an early versus late recurrence. So here today to uh, discuss her group's work is Dr. Manetta Liu, who is the, uh, who's an associate professor of medicine and oncology and the director of translational breast cancer research at the Georgetown Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center. Dr. Liu. Thank you, good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to have this opportunity to present the work on behalf of my collaborators from Georgetown. Uh, from the Edinburgh Breakthrough Research Unit uh, in Scotland, as well as Virginia Polytechnic University. So as Dr. Lagobel mentioned, uh, ER positive or estrogen receptor positive breast cancers can actually recur even after 10 years of, uh, from the time of diagnosis, and this is despite adjuvant endocrine therapy. If you look at the incidence of breast cancer recurrences on your left and breast cancer-related mortality on your right, you can see that the incidence of breast cancer can increase at 5, 10, even 15 years from the time of an original diagnosis. And this is true for both controls, meaning those individuals who are not treated, as well as those individuals who received five years of endocrine therapy. And the molecular basis for this observation is largely unknown. So our group hypothesized that early recurrences during tamoxifen treatment exhibit different biological characteristics than those that recur years later. Furthermore, these differences can be identified by looking at variation in the transcriptomes or the gene patterns from these tumors. We were able to acquire SNAP frozen pretreatment tumor biopsies, which were collected at the Edinburgh Breakthrough Research Unit from 1982 through 1990. These samples were obtained from breast cancer patients with stage one, two, or three hormone receptor positive breast cancer. All of these patients received about five years of single agent tamoxifen, and we had at least 10 years of follow-up in the absence of distant relapse for each of these individuals. A histology review of each sample was performed by the pathologist at Georgetown to confirm tumor content, and those samples that contained over 50% tumor were then cleared for RNA extraction, and then this allowed us to do gene expression analysis using an Affymetrix platform. In total, we had 111 samples that we used within this training data set, labeled BC030280. These again represented patients with stage one, two, and three breast cancer. There were a total of 57 relapses in this population, and we subdivided these relapses into those that occurred early, meaning within three years of diagnosis, and then those that recurred late, meaning those that recurred after 10 years from the time of diagnosis. Time to distant recurrence or last follow-up <coughs> was less than or equal to 24 years in this patient population with about a median follow-up of 13 years. It was important for us to identify a validation data set, so we looked through the literature and identified 17 publications that included genomic analyses in a similar patient population. Only one of those 17 publications, though, was selected for validation because it met our criteria for data quality, length of follow-up, type of treatment, et cetera. And that was published by Loy et al. in BMC Genomics in 2008. And that included 255 patients with stage one or two breast cancer. Again, there were a total of 67 recurrences. We broke those distant relapses down into early versus late. Time to distant recurrence or last follow-up was less than or equal to 15 years in this patient population with a median follow-up of 9.1 years. So using the test data set, um, RBC030280 data set, we developed a 91 gene classifier that essentially separated those patients who were going to recur early versus those that recur late. We then optimized this classifier, applied it to the test or the LOI uh, data set, uh, and we had very high accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, ne negative predictive value. Further classifier validation, though, came if you looked actually at the Kaplan-Meier survival curves um, using our predictor. So this is the cur these are the curves for the training data set, and then this is for the test data set. And you can see the hazard ratios and p-values are very highly statistically significant. 
Um, you'll also notice that survival is 0% for all of these curves, and that's because all of these curves, all of these cases represent recurrences. So we didn't actually stop at developing a classifier. We actually wanted to understand what these genes are trying to tell us within the classifier. Um, the group at Virginia Polytechnic University developed a novel computational method, and it allowed us to look at ER network topology to create a map, basically. Uh, we did this for the training data set, as well as the validation data set, and then combined the two. The method is called the Metropolis Sampling Method. Please don't ask me to explain it. Um, the genes are represented as nodes, or basically circles, on the diagram that you will see next. The size of each circle or node reflects the frequency of selection using this modeling. The uh, genes that are overexpressed in the early recurrence group are in red nodes, or red <coughs> circles, and the genes that are overexpressed in late recurrences are represented in the green circles or green nodes. The predicted interconnection between each of these genes or nodes is then represented by lines or edges. Okay? And however thick the line is means that that connection is selected more frequently. So don't panic. Um, this is the network topology in common between the test data set as well as the validation data set. Okay? Again, circles or genes, the lines are the connections between the genes. So the red nodes are those genes that are overexpressed in early recurrences, and they included Calmodulin 1, 2, and 3, SARC, CDK1, and MAP kinase 1. The green represent genes that are overexpressed in late recurrences and include ESR1, ESR2, <coughs> EGFR, <coughs> BCL2, and the androgen receptor. So to summarize, genes with increased expression in early recurrences included <coughs> modulin 1, 2, and 3, SARC, CDK1, and MAPK1. And those genes, sorry, that are overexpressed in late recurrences include ESR1, ESR2, EGFR, BCL2, and AR. So clearly there are robust molecular differences that exist between those tumors that recur early versus those that recur much later despite adjuvant tamoxifen. And the majority of the genes in our classifier actually relate to apoptosis and proliferation. So to be able to reliably predict early treatment failure, may hopefully help us to identify those patients who require agents beyond endocrine therapy to help prevent the onset of early metastases from hormone receptor positive breast cancer. And we hope to exploit these molecular differences uh, of early versus late recurrences to help us guide novel drug combinations in ER positive early stage disease. Most of our trials right now look at metastatic disease and we hope to take this earlier in an intelligent fashion. Our findings are compatible uh, with observations of potential treatment combinations looking at endocrine therapy with novel biologics. I just acknowledge all of my collaborators at the three institutions and all the patients who contributed to this study. Thanks for your attention.